Okay, chapter five, just enough physics. We're still on forces of constraint. I am going to show you how to solve a problem, so let's just jump right into it. This is a very famous problem, and I'll tell you, I got this wrong. I remember being an undergraduate student and getting this one wrong, and it seems so easy. This is called an Atwood machine. So I have a pulley right there, and I have a mass with a string, and the string goes over to another mass. Let's, let's make this one obviously bigger. So it's M2. So M2 is bigger. If I let this thing go, uh, and this has this is no mass, and the string has no mass, well, obviously, this whole thing's going to move like that, right? But the question is, what is the acceleration? Okay, so this involves tension because there's a string here. So let's just go ahead and draw a force diagram for mass 2. So this is M2. So here's my dot. I know I have the gravitational force pulling down, M2G. And then there's a tension force pulling up. And I don't know what that is. Okay. I do know that it's going to be smaller than the gravitational force, otherwise it wouldn't accelerate down. And I, I'm pretty sure it's going to accelerate down. But that's not important. You'll figure it out in, in, in soon anyway. Now if I do the same diagram for M1, I'm going to draw my thing right here. It also has tension pulling up. And the tension force should be the same. T. Um, I guess I should call this T2 and that T1 because they're, they're kind of different. Yeah, let, let's do it. Let's call it that way for now. Okay. And then I have uh, the gravitational force pulling down M1G. Now, this gravitational force is less than that because the mass is smaller. Okay. There is something important about this string. If the string has no mass, then the tension on this part of the string is the same at all other parts of the string. So that means that the magnitude of T2 has to equal the magnitude of T1. They don't have to pull in the same direction, even though they are in this case, uh, but, they, but they have to have the same magnitude. So now these are only in the y direction. These are on the y direction. I can say this, F net, y2, that's for this mass, it's going to be equal to t minus m2g equals negative m2a. Okay, so in this case, I, I knew that it was going to accelerate down. I said that already. So I went ahead and put the negative sign right there, and I'm just using a positive value for a. And I didn't put a subscript, and I'll tell you why. Now if I do the same thing for the other object, f net y1, that's going to be equal to t minus m1g equals positive m1a. So this one has a different mass, and it has a positive acceleration because this one's going to move up. But these two accelerations have to be the same. If they were not the same, if this accelerated down more than that one accelerated up, then the string would have to get longer or shorter, and that doesn't happen. Okay, so we're assuming the string doesn't stretch. So that's why this one's minus and that's plus, but the a's are the same. But now I have a situation with 1, 2, 1, 2. I have two equations, two unknowns. And so how do you solve two equations, two unknowns? Okay, the answer is don't try to do something like, well, if I add these or something like that, sometimes that works, but you have to be careful. Sometimes it doesn't work. Instead, I'm just going to solve this for T and substitute it in up there and be done with it. So solve this for T. T equals, I'm going to add M1G to both sides. So I get M1G plus M1A. Now I can substitute that in up here. So this equation becomes uh, M1G plus M1A, because that's T, minus M2G equals negative M2A. Now I have an equation with no T's. I only have A's. So let's get all the A's on one side and all the non-A's on the other side. So I'm going to add this to both sides, and then I'm going to subtract that other stuff. So I get M1A plus M2A, because I'm going to add that to both sides. Now I'm going to add this to both sides, so I get M2G, and then minus M1G. 
factor out M1, and I get factor out A, I'm sorry, M1 plus M2 A equals M2 minus M1 G. I factored out the G. Now I divide both sides by M1 plus M2, and I get A equals M2 minus M1 G over, running out of room, M1 plus M2. Okay, and I didn't put in the numbers because I don't really care. But I do care if this answer makes sense, right? The way I set it up, A should be positive because I already took into account the negative nature of A. So let's see, is this going to be positive? Well, the only thing that could be negative is this term. But I already said M2 was greater than M1. So that's got to be positive. G is positive. They add them together, they're positive. So it is positive. Positive. Okay. Uh, is it going to be greater than or less than? If I took another mass right here with no string and I dropped it, this one to have a greater acceleration of, it have an acceleration of G. So this has to have an acceleration of less than G. So if I look up here, I get a number, a fraction. The stuff on the bottom, since I'm adding it together, is going to be greater than the stuff on the top. So it's going to be less than G. So less than G. So I'm happy. So that's your answer. Okay. If I want to solve for the tension, you could go back. I'm not going to do that. I know A. I just plugged that in up there. Okay. So um, this is called the Atwood, Atwood machine. Write it up here. It's a famous problem. Now, let me go ahead and tell you what did I do wrong. Because I told you I made a mistake when I was a lad uh, in school. And I, I remember the mistake. The mistake I made was that I would say this tension is equal to M2G. And then I would solve for the acceleration over here. This tension is not equal to the weight. Because this is not in static equilibrium. That was my mistake. I said, oh, look, the, the string's holding it up, so the string has to have a tension of M2G. That's not true. Okay, so be careful. Don't make that mistake. Okay, I'm going to do another problem similar to this called the half Atwood machine. It's going to be great. <laughs> 